we've been discussing uh, uh, logistically how we're going to create a federated wiki of patterns based on this work, which has Michael's name on it here, and is also a product of Cystasis Foundation. Right. And, uh, and the uh, I'm a hanger-on in the Cystasis Foundation, and I'll let you describe <laughs> me because I described you. Okay. Well, Ward is, of course, the father of pattern languages and programming, along with Kent Beck. Uh, and uh, Wiki is absolutely the father of Wiki, uh, and also a, a, a great a contributor to Agile and other uh, movements in software, a legend in the field, but all started with pattern languages originally, yep, right? That's right. Uh, and um, so we're now trying and, to bring and, that back and, to the and, world. And I would say it still has a long way to go. Right. And, and we're pushing as hard as we can. We exactly, hope you join us. Exactly. I built this wiki and it was hypertext, and I said, well, it's the Portland Pattern Repository. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I consider any page with the word therefore in it to be a pattern, and people did latch on to therefore as kind of the hinge mm -hmm. between the two parts that they recognized of a pattern, then uh, you know, there's something like, like 3,000 patterns in there. Mm -hmm. But I would say there are only a, a few hundred of high quality patterns. Mm -hmm. And even then, people write, there's a discussion attached to every pattern that maybe even isn't in the pattern form. They just like to talk. And because they figured out they can write anywhere, they write anywhere. I mean, people kind of learn to read it for what it is. Mm -hmm. We didn't have editors. We didn't have the rules that Wikipedia has. And that But did you actually um, judge the quality of the patterns, or did that just naturally... Well, if uh, people misused Wiki, uh -huh. which one way to misuse Wiki is to use a bunch of net jargon. I just mm -hmm. remove those, the mm -hmm. net jargon. If I knew what it meant, I just changed it to words. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't jargon filled. But, but you didn't do what Wikipedia does, which is flag, you know, like, hey, this has no, a problem. No, or, no, no. Yeah. Uh, and, and in fact, one of the advantages of hypertext is it's actually more flexible than the printed page. Mm -hmm. right. And I would think that we want to encourage that flexibility. So. Maybe something that somebody wants to contribute to a pattern is a few more photographs. Right. right. Well, this so is where, where I, they put the photographs. I think the, in the, the the discussion section really is, you know, potentially infinite. Um, it, it can have photographs, diagrams, links, um, uh, you name it. You know, it can have all kinds of uh, resources there that people can. Um, can use when they're working on the pattern. I, I see the uh, the problem statement as being as concise as possible so that people coming into the pattern for the first time really understand what it's all about. And then I see the therefore statement as being as concise as possible because you need to give people something really specific and concrete to work on. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, But at the same time, the discussion section is where the meat of the pattern is really as I see it where you can you can say here's the literature here's the evidence here's what other people have done here's why this is you know what we know about the problem all that stuff and by the way as that changes over time the therefore might change you know that's sort mm -hmm. of the nature of what the pattern recommends so mm -hmm. so, so so let's say that we uh, You've got patterns down, so this comes down here, mm -hmm. and then they add to that a bunch of stuff that isn't a pattern. They add photographs, you know, uh, building plans, uh, maybe that actually has some review documents on the plans, you know, they're telling a whole story. Mm -hmm. And so this is all discussion. Mm -hmm. so, so there's your pattern linked to discussion. Mm -hmm. 
then you say, you know, you got a lot of discussion there that's kind of about how you work, but you understand the pattern and I want it. So you take this back and put it there and because it's come down here, been expanded into maybe a dozen pages, right. not just right. one page, then when this pattern with a therefore in it comes back, it can be a one-for-one -one replacement for this, right. and it automatically connects to all this. Right, and uh, I mean the beauty of that is that of course in a hyperlink format, this can be infinite. It doesn't have to be point patterns. Yeah, yeah, it can be anything you want. It can it be, be uh, discussion. Um, it can be a documentation of what got finally built in the end, how it was built, you know, um, what problems they had. It can be very peripheral to what the pattern is all about, but because it's just a hyperlink basically at this level, um, then that means that it, Go for it. You put all that you want in there, guys. So, 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 so we could call this patterns, mm -hmm. and that we want to assert some structure to, mm -hmm. so that so that things can mix and match in a way that as the reader goes through them, they can see it flow as a language. Mm -hmm. And then there's all this evidence mm -hmm. that is, you know. When you find the pattern and you say, how is this done in practice? You know, it turns out, you know, it, the same pattern might have gone over here and picked up, uh, picked up some more stuff, you know. So this pattern could, could be around the block a few times. Right. You know, down to here and then back again. And could really evolve as a result of that. That's right. And, yeah, and then... then and, the and, and then indirectly you've now connected this work to this work. Right. Exactly. Because somebody can see that that this has been around in three different sites, right. but you're not taking ownership of all right. this extra material. Right. The other thing is that, again, and I've been thinking a lot about this in the context where, let's say, this is a different climate, and this is yet another different climate or different, yeah. um, you know, legal system or political system. So they, in effect, they're, they're local adaptations that are required to meet the pattern. And so this guy does, you know, one, two, three things to fit the pattern to the context. And then this guy says, oh, I, I'm going to do something like that. Not the same thing, because I can't, because my system is different. My context is different. But I'm going to do something slightly different. So in effect, this connection, uh, this subsidiarity, um, allows this pattern, allows the patterns and to differentiate fact, more fact, rapidly. Maybe this one even came over here, and this came from there and got pulled back. So yeah, all exactly. of a sudden, there's this collaboration that's going on that that uh, is beneath you or beside you or something like that is just you know the 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 sprawling growth right that's a very good question whether or not everything goes back you know through a pull request or stays at the subsidiary level and and becomes peer-to-peer -peer, which is I hadn't thought about that and I think that's something that we need to think about. I suppose they're already looking at each other, aren't they? Because if they're well, they can, if they're, they're curious. If they're part of the same federated network, then yeah. they can see each other and they, you can say, hey, uh, I have this problem in my context. How did you solve it in your context? Ah, okay, uh, let me try something similar, but not the same. So yeah, that's a very interesting so, idea. So, so the, the thing that's important is that these things I've drawn like this, I call them with a T because there's therefore, it's going to be a document yeah. that looks like this. It's going to have a brief introduction. Uh -huh. It's going to have a problem. Yeah. I'll call it problem. It's going to say therefore. And then it's going to have a solution. And somewhere in there, it links into you know, hypertext. Yeah. And in the paper form, there were upbound links and down, uh, downward right. links, which are patterns referring to patterns. Right, and that's but, a fairly arbitrary distinction. But we need to leave room for yeah. patterns to refer to things other than patterns. Right. Right, you know, and, and you described it as kind of the discussion. There'll be more links off of here right. into other things. Right. But it still has to stay 
at this level consistent so that somebody can find their way through this right making this be more the index to all the blue right than you know the definitive work exactly and that's why i think we have to go ahead and say there is one pattern um convention one pattern protocol that can take all of this other stuff inside it but you need to make sure that you have the therefore statement you need to make sure that you have the problem statement and those need to be you know fairly concise so that people can um and as i said when they're first starting out they can understand the pattern and decide whether it's relevant and then secondly when they're using the pattern the 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 rec the guidance is very specific so they know uh you know what to do um, in a concrete way so, so let's just assume that your pattern comes down here of course there's the book that has more details if mm -hmm. you want to want to understand the pattern you can always right. read the book right but the pattern comes down here somebody messes it up a little bit uh -huh. by hooking in a bunch of other stuff it's uh -huh. good stuff right and then you want to take the pattern back right but it's messed up right you know they instead of having all these links they should have made another thing here and the link should have come off of there uh -huh. and so what you do is you just change it again you say i'm gonna i'm gonna make a new node here I, and so you fork it again, right? Well, you're forking their content that you've actually drug in right. by the nature of pulling back their thing. Right. But you can enforce the stylistic structure here, right? Even if they misunderstand it, right, and screw it up a little bit, right? So that's the editorial aspect that you'll have, right? By nature of owning the number one site in right. the federation here, right? But, but but you'll you know you'll have to have enough latitude right. that you can do that quickly right. without saying oh my god I want to turn it down I want to send them notes on how they should have done it and have them do it I right that could become an administrative nightmare oh yeah, to deal yeah with you just want to that. say yeah. oh yeah let's right. just let's just make I mean this that's a, again clear rules of the road clear um, sort of structure of what the conventions are and then a sort of a boundary of um, which, uh, I don't know if it's a certification or whatever process that says, okay, you're in, you comply, you're, uh, you're part of the, the Federation, or you're fine to go off on your own and we're, we're, we might still, you know, do uh, pull requests or other things that you might come up with later on, but we're, you're not in the same level of um, subsidiarity and, you know, within this tighter network. It seems to me that's important to have that distinction uh, again to deal with the problem of when you have somebody who's just kept saying no I don't I don't like this convention or I don't like um, you know the your definition of patterns or uh, I want to go off on my own and we say fine that's that's great so so uh, we have a lot of pages mm -hmm. uh, in the Federation now there's a couple of things that we expect people to do and they don't get, most people don't get that that's expected. One is uh, this first paragraph. Mm -hmm. We call it the synopsis. Right. If you search for something, you'll get a page of search results right. and you're writing the search results. Right. You're explaining to whoever searched what you have to offer right. on the rest of this page. Right. And you remember so we have that in It the doesn't other... help if this is some pointless little doodad you put in there because right. it's a heading that seems to make the rest hold. It has to be a paragraph that explains A real something. abstract for the... Yeah, it's an... It, it, you know, and, you know, a couple of sentences. I mean, you know, you're really pitching this pattern to somebody who's searching for something else. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever words you used in the title up here, you know, maybe you use the words a little differently, mm -hmm. because, you know, so it becomes even uh, keywords mm -hmm. in a sense. But it's really important that this first paragraph right. be a description. So, so is that the problem? Right. Or is that the solution? 
No, in the, in the pattern structure, that's uh, an abstract, I would say. Remember, we have that in the, um, uh, is it in the one in my dissertation where, um, or, uh, some, some of them are online um, prototype versions where there's a, um, a sentence that describes what the pattern is, and then there's the problem statement after that. And so the, the sentence before that... That, that, they, that, that makes sense. In other words, um, at this point, you're saying, let me tell you what I have here for you. Yeah, this pattern covers blah, blah, blah. It's almost like it helps you to know what the hyperlinks would be, uh, but it's not the hyperlinks exactly. It's more like this pattern it, uh, is, is here in the, in the realm of problems, you know, uh, in fact, when Chris has in the uh, hyperlink listing, he almost has that kind of narrative in the hyperlink. So make sure that you do the blah, 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 and that you're linking to the, you know, long, thin house or whatever. Uh, but in this case, I think those are two different things. I think we've got the abstract you can, you, and you then, can, the, you can and then the upper, one, and then the hyperlink. One, one thing that we do is you can have a page where all of these become paragraphs. Mm -hmm. So for wherever they come from, and then it, and, and it just takes that. It's mm -hmm. sort of like writing your own search result. That could be a great uh, menu for developing that, that, the, uh, you know, your own uh, uh, project and, pattern and language. And what's neat about them, there's little icons here that shows where they came right. from because they can come from anywhere in the Federation. Right, yeah, and I love that. Well, that's another in, in whole fact, huge topic, in, in of fact, course. you can do a search and get a page full of search results, remember, that are that just look like that. Yeah. And you can drag them in. You right. can say, okay, I've got the search result. There's 100 things, only 10 of which I think are relevant. Yeah. You just drag the 10 in, yeah. oh, and you're great. building a page. That would be great. It's great as long as people... I mean, this whole text. question of how do you... How do you do a menu? How do you do a search? How do you do a visualization of the network that you're evolving as you're building your own project pattern language or your own, you know, sort of compilation? Um, that's another whole huge question, and this seems like a great, a great way to handle that, a great way to uh, access the, the, the gist of what each pattern is all about and, and generate a list. So um, I think the other key question is, okay, so cystasis would be responsible for this and for relating to these and whatever, you know, sort of subsidiary governance, like, okay, you guys are on your own, but if you, you know, suddenly start writing th what we don't think are patterns anymore, we're going to yank your credentials or something, I don't know what, but, um, but uh, there is a, a close uh, subsidiary relationship where we are exchanging materials and you can exchange materials with other peers and so on and so forth. Then if you're outside of that realm, you're sort of off on your own at that point and you're, you know, you're making more or less a parallel project, which again is fine, but it, it doesn't it bring us into the picture in terms of any administrative responsibility or hosting responsibility or anything like that. Does that make sense, do you think? To have the two yeah, tiers? Yeah, well, it, it depends upon how you want to organize. Well, I think on two levels. One is just the practical level of, you know, we can't um, administer every single potential, you know, user. Yeah, um, you, want this, user. you want this to be bigger right. than uh, any one person or any small group can do. Right. 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 But, we want it to but, be federated. Right. But as it gets bigger and bigger, it will become its own thing. Right. Not your thing. Right. And that's okay, but it needs to be clear, I think, when it's growing within the family, so to speak, and when it's going off and becoming its own thing, which is also fine. I mean, obviously, the, and this is this goes to the whole sort of open source nature of the pattern language, as they made very clear in the introduction that you know we want thousands of pattern languages and thousands of people writing every person in a sense 
writing their own uh, pattern language and so on and so forth. And so we need to say, that's great. If you think we're all just off on the wrong track and you want to just go off and do your own thing and use the same software, it's open source software. So by all means, go do that. But if you're going to say, well, we want to play in your sandbox, then okay, there's a certain other level of uh, of standards and of um, expectations that are going to apply there. Does that, that make sense? You think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and, I mean, for, so for, for in, both in, in our pattern community, uh, we trained a lot of people what patterns are mm -hmm. in our mind, and we created the wiki, which was a place where people could try writing patterns. Mm -hmm. And they also wrote a lot of other stuff. Mm -hmm. And people found that invigorating. Mm -hmm. Then there was an attempt to make other wikis, mm -hmm. and they were not so successful because why would you write at somebody else's wiki if all the traffic is at my wiki? Right. Uh, the exception being Wikipedia, which turned out to get more traffic than me right. and became its own thing with its own way of doing stuff. But the same thing applied again, right? They didn't create a, a second Wikipedia or a you know, Wikipedia competitor. Well, there have been many Wikipedias created and they're nothing right. compared exactly. to Wikipedia. Exactly, because again, there's a value in having a single mothership, as it were, you know, and and although, you know, again, if somebody else goes off, like this could be your wiki and this could be Wikipedia, and this becomes its own new mothership in its own right, and that's great. But so, um, so, so, so there, there's a clear. lot, there's, in our community, there's a lot of people who said, well, Ward's wiki is not good enough mm -hmm. as a pattern repository. We can, we can do better. Right and routinely people try to do better and none of them have really worked. Right. So uh, maybe I didn't apply enough leadership when I made my central thing because it also became a, a center of agile software development. Right. Which to my mind was related to patterns. It was how we discover patterns of software right. is that we develop in an agile way. Right. But there are people who didn't like agile and liked patterns and were kind of annoyed by that. Right. So uh, But wasn't it also the case that number one, there was just a value in having one, you know, sort of one stop shop as it were. Uh, and then secondly, I knowing you as I do now and knowing that you you know, value the simplest thing that could possibly work. Yours was maybe a little more agile and a little more sort of lean and well, simple. Well, the, the, the thing that killed it at the end is it became too popular. Uh -huh. Google liked it too much. Google indexed it. It sent lots of people who didn't have the same attitudes yeah. there. Once they kind of got on to the fact that they could post spam uh -huh. there uh -huh. and other people had to go and remove it and it became a burden to uh -huh. keep it working and so the value of federation is that it has it's largely immune to that right right, right? it's meant to have right. these satellites right. and if you want to make a satellite down here that's full of spam right. and hope that it gets forked back into your right visible site well don't count on that's, it because yeah, i don't think right. you're going to do it right but but you at least have that evolutionary system and that's why I think what we're talking about right now is so important to get clear and to be thinking about how this federated universe is gonna be structured in terms of you know what are we responsible for and what are we not responsible for and what are the layers of that and so on and uh, and it seems to make a lot of sense to me and you know at this level um, so, so I want to to, let me summarize this yeah. in, in two things. Here I'm saying the format has to be blindingly simple. Right, absolutely. I think simpler than the work that you've been kind of showing me as prototypes. Okay. Because it is better to be a good fit with hypertext mm -hmm. than a good fit with the tradition going back to the Alexander. Right, agreed, right. And, and the real advantage is 
being able to leave the pattern form and go off and do other things. Mm -hmm. Right. Very important. I agree. Great. The other thing is that, in said another way, is that somebody who's coming to this work is going to be full of ideas and is going to execute them poorly. Mm -hmm. So we need to create a playpen of right. sorts where they can try their hand right. and basically mess everything up right. until they say, oh, I get it. Right. And then they say, let me erase all that and start over. Right. Let me erase all that and start over. Right. Start over a few times until they understand the wisdom of the form. Right. And that means that they need a way of saying, hey, I did this. Right. Can I show it to you and you tell me if I'm on the right track? So Another, that... And, and, and uh, that's not the same as saying, I've got a finished work that I want to be included. Right. It's more of a, a tutorial role. Have I, have I used the capabilities here well? Right. Uh, and and uh, unfortunately, that's where having a deep understanding of the pattern form and especially how it operates as a language is something that's easy to misunderstand. Right. So, so, so that how to be encouraging at the same time as you're making a place where people can learn about this. Right. Uh, so that suggests that the authoring tool needs to be, you know, if it's a template, which is the, the thing I was playing with, as you saw. Yeah. Um, I'm not entirely convinced that's the right model, but they need something to go on and some, some kind of authoring tool that's also a tutorial at the same time that sets, you know, for prompts them or something, right? Right, right. And so, then they can revise it all they want. So if, if we... Maybe not in this site. Maybe we construct this site over here that is a little like it, but has material that didn't make the cut mm -hmm, for the book. Mm -hmm. And this is this Mahaffey's playpen, uh -huh, right. right? Where you talk about different people you've talked to. If somebody mm -hmm. says, oh, how's that? It's an mm -hmm. interesting idea. So can I just put that in as a pattern? You put mm -hmm. it in over here and that that is weakly associated with this, people, mm -hmm. but they know they're going someplace else. Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, Mahaffey himself is not afraid to experiment. Mm -hmm. I guess I can experiment. Right, sure. The other thing they can do is they can be on this site mm -hmm. without a server of their own right. and just start editing. Right. And if they just start editing, those edits will stick mm -hmm. as long as they stay in the same browser because it actually stores them right in the browser. Well, and if they're and, here, and nobody else will right. see it, but if they right. come back to here, it'll right. be there. They're doing it on their own forked copy, right? Yes. Yeah. So then, if we want to keep those, we can keep them, or we can edit them, or we can whatever. In, well, they know, would have to give them to pull you. Pull them back. Yeah. Because pull they would be on their own computer. Right. Right. Not on your computer. Right. Not on the internet. Right. They would be something that only they can see. Right. And you'd have to do a pull request. So yeah. they could send you a file and say, mm -hmm. here's 12 patterns I made, do you want to look them over? Mm -hmm. Or more importantly, if there was a regular meetup mm -hmm. and maybe you kicked it off, but maybe it kind of sustains itself so it's right. not just you, right. maybe in architectural schools they do this. Right, well that right. would be a great place to, uh, you know, obviously for this for students, and that's another whole dimension to this, is the, the potential for students to use this as a kind of, um, um, educational process to develop um, their understanding of the nature of a design problem and do you know one of the things that at the University of Oregon for example pattern languages are used for architectural programming meaning defining the nature of the design problem first and generating all of the yeah. you know all of the aspects of it so this is a total natural for students to work on as well um, and there could even be you know a student version or a student system of some kind that's, you know, customized for that. So, so there's 56 patterns? In yeah, the book? in the book right now, yeah. Do you think we could come up with 
a very concise version of that that doesn't really duplicate the book in any way, but you could read it and feel like you've been through the book. Well, I think that's actually something that we ought to have anyway, right? Yeah. We ought to be able to read, we ought to be but, able to but, see but, a condensed should, version of the pattern. But it should be an invitation right. to improve. Well, right, and and also, and this is why, you know, frankly, at the moment, um, this book is fairly draft, and the patterns are quite short and incomplete, and I would say in many respects, and so on. But um, I think again, they, I take your point that what is online should be quite sparse, and all of the extra content, if you will, is in the discussion section or it's hyperlinked or it's like, oh, if you want to know more about all this stuff that's in the book, here's the here, here's where it is, you know, but we don't put that in your face when you're looking on the online version. In the online version, it's quite um, elegant and, you know, uh, simple. And, and again, as you say, maybe we can pull out all of the uh, therefore statements as uh, it's almost like uh, uh, table of contents items or something like that that people can very quickly uh, get hold of and, and decide what's you know uh, which ones they're interested in looking at further. If we made a test site mm -hmm. that was like that. And maybe we said instead of automating a conversion, because we've experimented with automatic mm -hmm. construction, mm -hmm. and then it's like how close to the e-form can we get? Mm -hmm. If instead we say, let's make a simplified version, mm -hmm. and with the electronic version right there, let's just, oh, here's like five sentences that explains the problem. Mm -hmm. Can we find three sentences in there right. that would serve copy the three sentences into a template that we've made for this purpose. Right. Well, you're Three remember. sentences for the therefore, the, the solution, and maybe a link or two to something. Right. And do that 56 times. I think so. I think if, if we did that, then we would be doing 56 times the amount of work that we're asking any one person to do as they try their first pattern. Right. But we would find, can we make a site that you can browse and feels like the book? Right. Well, um, I, I'm planning to do that work anyway, because that's the whole idea of taking these 56 as, um, you know, sort of um, seeds, um, if you will, or whatever, um, for the, the online repository. But it also raises the bigger question of, are there methods that we can use to be interportable between the online version and other print copies? Uh, because for example, what if I'm, uh, what if I've made this structure and I wanna hand it out to all the people that have been part of some um, uh, workshop that helped to create it and I want to give them a nice version of it. Is there a way that I could scrape that online version to generate something like that? Sure. Would that be, you know, and so, so could we make these things? Would it look like this? Maybe. I mean, I don't know. But the, the Well, one key... of the problems is is if 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 you have a small page and five auxiliary pages, it doesn't go into the printed form well because you don't have the hypertext interaction. No, but um, you remember when we did the um, uh, the dissertation version and we had the uh, different patterns that were pretty simplified, right? Yeah. They, um, and yeah, there's more discussion, more sort of narrative form here, which you could add if you wanted to, or you maybe don't have to add that. But, um, you know, the online version could always be a little bit simpler and more spare than the printed version, but if there's a way to, and I'm thinking about this also because after having talked to Yulia about can we can we generate an ebook? Well, why do we want to generate an ebook? Why not just put the thing online and that's it? You know, um, maybe that maybe what we're doing is coming up with a new 
in effect a new ebook format which is the repository itself you know and maybe the repository can just as we can go from the printed patterns to the repository which is what i'm planning to do maybe we can go from the repository to other printed versions that people want because mm -hmm. i mean this goes to the bigger question of what's the future of print uh, and my feeling is that we still have a need for these things you know mm -hmm. these things that i can hand you and they, we yeah. can talk about them and 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 it's it, it, you know it doesn't have hyperlinks and it doesn't have a lot of the other things that we want but it does have something else which is you know there's still a need for that i think there's still a need for these paper well, my, my, my wiki spun off mm -hmm. multiple books. I lost count of how many right. books, but let's say it was six. Right. Maybe it was only three. But people would look in there and they say, well, there's a lot of good ideas here. Right. And then they just, from that, said, well, these are the patterns I want to include in my book. Right. And then they rewrote them. Yeah. They said, okay, well, I want to put these patterns that people did in my words but I got them by understanding how people had taken these concepts and linked them together. Right. Right. And I think that that's a very reasonable thing to do. It's possible that what will emerge with people's contribution is better than a long comment section, mm -hmm. which tend to be pretty random. Right. Something that's organized and has some coherence. Right but maybe not enough coherence to justify uh, being bound between covers. Right, right. That there would be some more editorial work right. that would be appropriate to do there, right. and, and uh, you know somebody should pay for a book to have that right. benefit and would expect that, to have it take up space on their shelves. Right. And, and I don't know if... Uh, you know, you'd like it to speak with the voice of the author or the editor yeah. uh, in a book, but I don't think we want to hold the, the hypertext to that. Right, and it, it, because it, it is going to be edited by multiple people, and maybe what happens once it goes into print is then it's one person who's editing it at the, for that version. Obviously, somebody's got to do that work, and maybe it's their voice, in effect, that is that becomes the, you know, the sort of... Um, um, the way of defining exactly what's going to go in and what's not. And the other issue is this goes to the whole bigger question of uh, curation and how the process works to generate better quality over time. And you were talking about the comments section and people can just throw out any old comment, especially when they're, um, you know, anonymous and, you know, Twitter and so on. But to be able to say, no, actually, I'm engaged in a process. It's got a structure. I've got a role. Um, I know what we're all working towards together. That, then it seems like, then it's more like Wikipedia, right? It's more like we're building something, and I want to add something. I don't want to take stuff away. Or if I do take something away, it's only in order to add more. So Wikipedia had kind of a modest beginning mm -hmm. in that. Jimmy Wales liked the idea, and he wrote a bunch of articles about Ayn Rand because mm -hmm. he was a libertarian. And, right, right. Uh, so that was the foundation. Uh, there was another fellow who was really interested in the technology, and he was a student of Esperanto. Oh, right. So he started writing encyclopedia articles in Esperanto, establishing the tradition of working in multiple languages. Right. And so it wasn't much. Right. There's more here in this book than they had, that's for sure. <laughs> that's interesting. But, but what if we, what if we said, in order for you to present this material in a classroom setting, what if we took two of these sections, that looks like it would be six to eight patterns, mm -hmm. and just did this. Mm -hmm. And while we did it, we would write the introductory material mm -hmm. that says, here's how you can do it too. Sure. And in fact, then people who, if they happen to have this book in front of them, they could try doing a few more. Mm -hmm. Maybe the exercise is, well, let me see if I can write the pattern, mm -hmm. and let me see if I can squeeze it into this form. Right. 
and then maybe hang a few pictures where I see it on our campus or something like that. Right. You know, there, there, there could be an activity right. where it isn't important to be publication quality, mm -hmm. but it isn't important for us to be publication quality either because right. it's an experiment. Right. Sure. No, I think that would be great. You know, the thing, going back to uh, Jimmy Wales and the founding of Wikipedia, and I know that there was a lot of sort of libertarian uh, utopianism, I'll say, yeah. uh, behind that. But what I find that's interesting about it is they found their way to something that is more like what they call uh, subsidiarity, um, which is not really libertarianism. Libertarianism is this idea that you can just go off on your own and do whatever, but what they ended up creating was curation, right? There's a structure and there's rules of the game and there's checks and balances and there are people with uh, distributed roles. Everybody has a certain amount of um, autonomy, but autonomy within a shared structure rather than, you know, you're off on your own uh, to be uh, a genius or whatever. And, uh, and, and, and all that was actually emergent. Yeah, right. And, and it was not Jimmy, yeah, leading the charge on that. Right. It was other people who fell in love with the project and who got good at the project, yeah. sharing that expertise with others. And then pretty soon, you know, the hierarchy of editor rights and yeah, that right. emerged. Right, that curation yeah. process. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. So it was. Uh, 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 there were some charter elements. Like one was be bold. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think something's a good idea, just be bold and do it. Mm -hmm. And forgive whoever reverts you if they revert you, I guess, is implicit in that. Uh, you know, another word, another one was, uh, if there's a rule, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to follow it. Mm -hmm. If there's a good reason to break the rule. But you might have to defend it. Mm -hmm. right. And the addition of talk pages you know, really help that because people could be challenged and, and then they could defend themselves on these talk pages and then we get hammered out. So that was a very good thing. So there's this thing of neutral point of view, right? Yeah. That they talk about that. So, I mean, I, I, I think in our case, we don't need that in, in the sense that there is a, uh, in the patterns, there's a normative judgment being made. We think that this is going to be a better place for human beings. That doesn't mean you can just claim that. You'd actually have to provide the evidence, but the evidence is still, you know, ultimately going to be interpreted subjectively, I think, or, or qualitatively, I should say. Um, actually, the word, the better word would be intersubjectively because it's qualities that we can all share, that most of us share when we're looking at a beautiful building or, a, you know, a beautiful pattern, you know. We, we say, well, um, this is better for people to be around a beautiful structure. And so um, that's why I'm making this pattern, to show you how to make a beautiful structure. And so that, there's all kinds of assumptions in there, but they're not bad assumptions. They're just, they just need to be transparent. You know, you just need to understand why. There, there is uh, uh, this confusion. Uh, Wikipedia is... Uh, explains that it is not a source of truth. Mm -hmm, right. And it makes no attempt to validate the truth of things. Right. It, it says it is a place that is a, a, is a condensation of material from truthful sources. Right. So they judge the sources that they quote right. and insist that everything they say be defended right. by citation. Right. Well, that means that they can never really get out ahead of the literature. Right. It might be that we need to get out ahead of the literature. Right. That we need to be solving problems that maybe have solutions that haven't been described. Or right. maybe even the solution is not palatable, yeah. you know, given our attitudes. In the current environment. Yeah, in the current reason. environment. You yeah. know, maybe it's uh, right. anti-economic or something, right. you know. As if economists were the well, that's the other dimension of, of this that I find exciting is the idea that there's something shareable to work on here. You identify what's shareable and you get to work on it, as opposed to you identify what you disagree with and then you fight over it and you get nowhere. And that's well, well, pretty and, much the state and, of and, our politics. And so, 
in a sense, there needs to be a certain amount of policy like yeah. that that is, is thought out, at least in general terms. Yeah. And it doesn't have to apply everywhere, but it should apply to anything right. that you know goes out under the name cystasis. Right. What I realize in looking at this is this is actually a very good model of, of what they call subsidiarity, where you've got you know local people working on local problems. They're differentiated. They're free in the sense that they're free to solve their own problem, but they're not free in the sense that they're an island in, in nowhere. They're part of a, a culture. They're part of a larger system that has a set of expectations. It's, ideally, it works the way science works, you know, that you have various governing bodies and so on, but they're not authorities in the sense that they tell everybody what to do. They just are, are peer reviewers. They review what people are doing and they say, actually, you haven't cited that properly or you haven't done your research in the right methods or you know you haven't demonstrated that to be true but that's um that's a lot like what we're talking about i think in a sense 